uh, for an office. This is our CIT case. And uh, first we're going to start off by uh, taking the cover off to see uh, what's in there. This looks like uh, USB free. Yes, this is definitely USB free. So we have uh, two USB free ports in the front panel. You have a fan in there, a front fan. I don't know how well you can see in there, but there is a 12 centimeter fan in there. These are the screws. And the Deep speaker for the motherboard. These are also the motherboard screws. Right, the best thing is to put the computer like this in order to fit the motherboard and everything else in there. So first what you want to do is just get these wires out of the way so you have more room to work in here. And uh, I don't honestly know which is better to do, to start from the power supply or the motherboard. But I think I'm going to start with a power supply so it's out of the way and uh, then I can put the motherboard in there. And this is the power supply, it's also CRT. You can just move the computer out of the way. So we can just unbox this one. Looks like it opens somewhere in here. Uh, other way around, but well, it's open. A bit damaged, but looks like empty. Maybe it's just to hold it in place. But here's the power supply. And let's just get it out of the package then. Be careful not to cut into the wires. This is not the modular one, this is a simple power supply. Well, here is the manual how to install it. However, I won't be needing this. Now we can fit the power supply. Not sure where the screws are. Usually the screws come with the power supply, but yeah, I think the motherboard has also the power supply uh, screws. I mean, not the motherboard, but the case. So uh, try to find them. If you're not sure which screws are for the power supply, then uh, these are the ones. You can tell by the shape, they're all the same. So you should be able to find at least four of them. There might be more because these also uh, hold all the graphics cards and other PCI cards in place. Or whatever cards you want to put in there. And As you can see, this one has the power supply mount on top, which is very common to nowadays computers. So basically all you do is just put the power supply in the place, and of course make sure the fan is facing inside of the computer. You don't want to block this out, you have small edges to hold it. Just slot it in place, and then you will just put the screws in there. It's also good to have a magnetic screwdriver, so we can just do this and put them in place. This is where you have to be careful not to do what I just did. But also it's good to put it across first in here and then the screw in there. If you're wondering how tight the screw should be, well, not too tight and not too loose, so uh, don't, much, don't put much force on it. 
and don't leave them too loose either. Just make sure the power supply doesn't move anywhere and you should be fine with it. Alright, and here we have the power supply mounted. Also, you might want to get these uh, wires out of your way. Just put them over there. And now you can mount the motherboard. Alright, and uh, we're going to prepare the case for the motherboard. As you can see, there are no mounts in here. What you need to do is uh, use these kind of pieces. And you need to put them where the motherboard has the mounts. But you can't do this before you have the motherboard actually out of the box. Because the motherboard, uh, as you can see, there are a few of these uh, holes in there where you can mount these. So uh, it's best to take the motherboard out of the case first and then look where, where exactly it goes. Then you can mount them. Right, and this is the motherboard. It actually came as a bundle, so uh, but it's not mounted. So we can unbox this one. Usually the bundles they come uh, pre-mounted, the CPU and everything, but this one is not. These are the SATA cables, just put them inside. These are obviously the drivers and stuff. This is the back plate for the motherboard. There is a quick installation guide. This is actually very important to know where the wires go, so uh, keep this in handy. And then we can open the box. Here's the motherboard itself. Then. It's quite a small one. And you have to be careful with the motherboard because they are quite fragile actually. So uh, don't just put it anywhere. This bag is also the anti-static so it doesn't build up the static in there. So it's actually very hard to take the motherboard out. You should not be touching it from underneath like this. So uh, just keep it on this bag. That's the best place to put it in. As you can see the motherboard goes this way in the computer. So uh, now we can see where the, where the screws go. As you can see there is one. I don't know which one that is, but we'll see. So if we put it in here. You can see it takes uh, the top ones on there. And which bottom ones? <coughs> it's very hard to see from here. Two in there and... The top ones, and also this should be just hand tight. But if it doesn't fully uh, go into the case, then you should use some kind of pliers. Don't know why this motherboard is weird. I mean, there should be another one, but not to worry about it. Five of them is uh, more than enough to hold it in place. So, and the next thing is to fit the back panel. Try to open this up. And if you're not sure which way it goes, just look from the motherboard itself. So obviously it goes this way. And this one is pretty easy to mount, so you just look which way it goes. And just push it in there. Just make sure it's nicely in place and that should be fine. And now we're going to put the motherboard in there. You have to be very careful with this not to uh, touch any edges on it or not to bend any components on it. So uh, be very gentle with it. The way you should put it, uh, don't slide it on the computer either. Just lift it up if you want to move it. Just push this end slightly in there. And again it's stuck on the back panel just a little bit. but. Uh, Just see that the screw holes uh, line up and that's it. It's going to always have a little pressure on it but it's not much from the back panel. So uh, I'm going to leave it as it is and we find the screws. And again if you're not sure which screws to use, well there are always different screws but I think these are for the motherboard. Easiest way is just take one of these and try them in here and see if they fit in there. 
I hope this one doesn't fit. So it's these tiny screws. You can see these ones. So you need uh, five of them. Right, when putting the screws in there, I definitely recommend having a magnetic screwdriver. And just be very careful not to scratch the motherboard with these things. And don't put the first screw too tight, just leave it a little bit loose, just in case you need to move the motherboard. And again, I recommend putting another screw across as far as possible from the first one. So in this case it's this one. This one we can tighten a little bit more. You might actually uh, want to put these between the screws, but it's not so important because uh, as you can see the motherboard has actually the edges on it, which is meant for the screws, so uh, I will actually put these for the remaining ones, that's actually good to have. But it's also a bit more difficult, so uh, these also help keep the screws in place if you put a little bit of pressure on it, so uh, if the computer has some uh, vibrations from the fans, then the screws don't just uh, shake loose. I'm going to actually put these uh, small washer things on the other ones too. Alright, so I have uh, replaced these washers in here. I mean, not replaced, but uh, added them in there. And if you're wondering, again, how tight the screws should be, well, just put the screwdriver on them and just tighten them with like uh, two or three fingers. Not too much. If you feel the screwdriver starts to slip over, then that's more than enough. So, uh, don't need to put much pressure. So, uh, i never actually seen this before. And some people may actually say that it's better to uh, put the wires in place, but I think it's better to have actually the CPU in place. So, uh, we're gonna put the CPU next and uh, let's move this on the side. And the CPU is in here. That is a uh, quad core FX4100. Uh, this is more than enough power for an office computer. So uh, let's unbox this one. Right, so this is cut off from there. Just open it up. This comes with a heatsink. That is the heatsink. Oh yeah, look at that, it's all red. All right, and this is the CPU itself. Little tiny thing in here. I have to be very careful with this CPU not to actually take it out from the wrong place. So uh, I'll just show you how it's best to do it. And the CPU is the first thing to mount, so uh, let's just move the computer. Right. And basically just find the side where the CPU opens from, the case, it's from here. And I think it's better to open it this way. You can be very careful not to squash it in there. Because these pins are extremely fragile, so uh, to not touch the pins, take it from the sides like this and don't touch the pins at all. And what you want to do always is just examine that all the pins are straight and there are no bent pins and just see it from the side. And you can also see some uh, small holes in there. These are the ones that are also on here. So you know which way the CPU goes. It can only go one way, which is this way. First you have to undo this, then just carefully put the CPU in place and it has to just go in there on its own. Just put your finger in here, apply some pressure. Well, you don't have to be very careful with this, you can put quite a lot of pressure on it and just put the lever back in there. CPU is in place and now to mount the cooler in there. Right, the cooler is uh, here, the heatsink. So just uh, this one. This has a pre-applied thermal based. I've actually heard that this is not a good way to apply the thermal based. That the best thing is actually just put one drop in the middle and just let it spread out on its own. But well, I don't have an extra thermal base, so this will have to do. So first we're gonna check these are the brackets in here. Before you start mounting it, you have to see which way you can go with it. Obviously if you put it this way you can see the power supply is very close so you can't really attach this one in there. So it's best to just turn it around and put it this way. First thing uh, you want to put this bracket in there. So uh, 
control to see what's going on in there. Okay, that bracket is in place. Just hold it with one finger so it doesn't slip. The other bracket is in place. Make sure it's there and then we can fix it. Don't be afraid of it, it has quite a lot of pressure on it. Once you see that just do this a little bit, so the thermal base in there. And now we can attach the cables. This is a CPU fan. Not sure which one it should go into, but it looks like there is one uh, empty plug in here, so I'm going to just put it in here for now. But the wires are still on the way, so uh, we're going to work on some uh, cable management for a second. Also be careful so the wires doesn't actually go into the fans in here or in here. Right, so I have a cut around to this wire, I just put it uh, under the heatsink. But you don't really want to push it into the CPU either, so uh, well it's far away from it right now, so it's fine. And next we're going to put the RAM in place. This should actually have 8 gigabytes of RAM, but unfortunately uh, there was some mistake in the order, so we only have 2 gigabytes at the moment, but it will be replaced. So this is a 2 gigabyte module. Try not to touch the pins in there. And the RAM can only go uh, one way. First undo these pins in here. Make sure it goes into the channel. And just push it down until the pins click in place. Then just make sure they are tight enough and that's fine. And I think the next step is to connect up all the wires. For this you need the motherboard guide. Right, so this is where you need the manual. These are the pin layouts in here. It's actually a very bad manual because uh, I can't really tell where they are. However, if you look closely in here, you can actually say uh, says HDD in there. So it's this pin in here and the other one is here, which they mention in the manual. One of the things we can connect is the beep speaker. I don't really use it, but uh, I'm gonna just uh, put it in place. This is just for an uh, office build, so uh, you can see from here the speaker is the outside two pins, plus and minus. Obviously, the plus is the red one, and minus is the black one. The speaker goes uh, into this one in here, and now the hardest bit is this cable. These are all the power switches and LEDs. So you can see it actually says on top of these which one is which and then you have this manual in here so which matches with these so uh, just have to look which one is which and make sure that the plus and minus is correct so um, this is the most complicated process I have to say when attaching the motherboard so you just have to make sure you attach them uh, correctly uh, so uh, I have connected this up, but then I just realized that uh, this cable is on the way, so um, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to take off the other panel, this side, and I'm going to run these uh, wires behind the motherboards, They're out of the way, so uh, this panel just slides off like this. And as you can see, that's why you have these holes everywhere. So you can run the wires behind this and uh, connect it up again. So what I'm going to do is just take the cable, run it from somewhere here to here and reconnect it. All right, so as you can see, I ran the cable from here. You have to be careful, don't put uh, too much uh, tension on the cables. And if you look from the other side, then this is where the cable ends up. So uh, it's nice and tidy. The next thing is the audio cable. Not entirely sure which one you should connect, but uh, I will use this HD audio, and that's the audio port in there. I'm gonna do the same thing with this cable. Just try to put it uh, behind here. I have to turn the computer uh, upside down again, or on the side. It's a lot better this way. And this can go only one way, as you can see. There's one pin missing, so. Uh, Nothing hard in there, just plug it in there and there you go, it's done. This other one we can just hide behind the back panel. Unfortunately this motherboard does not have this kind of connector, so uh, I have to leave this one out for now. Just uh, 
put it out of the way for a second. And now we can connect up the power supply cables. Or actually I will leave these out for now. I will connect everything else up and then I will connect the power supply up. Alright, so uh, what we have left is a video card. For office computer you don't need really uh, that much power, so uh, this should do. And then we have a hard drive, that's a 2 terabyte hard drive. And we have a DVD writer, just a basic one. So uh, we're going to start off with the video card. Let's just uh, unbox this one. I think that's the wrong side. Yes, it is. This is for the small case, you don't need this one. That's the drivers, you don't really need this one either, you can just uh, download them from a uh, NVIDIA website. That's the video card itself in here. So, uh, you can be very careful with this, don't put any pressure on it. That's the video card itself. This should be enough power to uh, play the HD videos and handle all the other applications, so uh, you can just uh, plug it in there. So this is the PCI Express slot, where it goes. And first you want to just look which one it takes up, so it's uh, this one here. These you just push out, don't worry about that, this is supposed to break off. You can't reattach these, so... Uh, and you need another screw in here, which are the same screws uh, as we used for the power supply. So uh, first thing, just uh, put the video card in there and uh, just push it in there. And this here is the lock. If you push it this way, you can uh, pull it out. This way it's locked. So uh, that's a simple one. Make sure it's in place. And then just put one of the screws on the side in here just hold the card uh, upwards like this way so uh, it's perfect in place this screw you can tighten uh, as tight as you want nothing to break in there but you might just overdo the screw so not too much force but there's so much of the graphics card and then we have a hard drive in here. Just again, uh, careful with the package. I'm not even sure where the hard drives go in this case, I think uh, in front of the pan. This is the fan connector, the power for the fan. And we can put the hard drive uh, somewhere in the middle of the fan. That's where they go. So a uh, hard drive, you can tighten the screws from here. And as about the hard drive screws, I think it's these ones. We just try if they go in there. So uh, that was not supposed to happen, but Go. Don't want to push the hard drive too much into the fan, but actually I'm gonna move the hard drive up. I think because it here the SATA connections, so uh, I'm gonna put it in here, or maybe it will restrict the airflow for the graphics card. So um, maybe move it even one up. We put it in here. Yeah, that's a better place. So uh, not too much in the fan, and just uh, put the two screws in here. There is absolutely no need to put the screws on the other side on the hard drive. More than enough to hold it from one side, so uh, it's not going anywhere. And that's it. The hard drive is in place. And now all we have is the DVD writer. This one comes with the screws, 
But apparently this grill has uh, some kind of uh, brackets on the sides, so uh, that's how it comes out. There were some plastic things holding it from here, so uh, you don't really need this anymore, but it looks nice. So, uh, <laughs> put it on the side. So the drives, it's just, um, should slide in from the front, like this. And it's stuck on something? No, it's not. So, uh, it shouldn't go any further, but uh, just line it up with this. And the same thing with this, like with the uh, hard drive, you have screw holes in here. And we're going to use the original screws from uh, DVD drive. Again, you have four of them, but you only need two really. So, uh, just uh, two of them on this side. And now the last thing to do is uh, connect up all the wires. And I also recommend uh, putting all the wires behind the motherboard as much as possible. Fortunately, I can't really do anything about this at the moment. Actually, I found a place I'll just put it above that uh, DVD rider. There we go. That's hidden. So, uh, first thing is the motherboard power, which is uh, this one. And if possible, I should move it around in the back, so I have to see how it goes. Right, so uh, most of the stuff is done, uh, all there is to uh, connect all this mess up. I started off with the uh, motherboard uh, power cable, which I have put behind there, and it goes uh, right in here. So it's just going to go one way, So, um, but the motherboard doesn't have a screw, so I have to hold it a little bit, which is a bit tricky honestly. Right, that should be in place. Then the next one we take the CPU power, which is uh, this one, the four pins. I don't think I can really hide this cable. This goes right in here. So just have to put it in place somehow, maybe. You can just do this. But if you tie a knot in here, don't uh, tighten it too much, just leave it loose. And again, this only goes one way. There we go, it clicks in place. Right, so the CPU power is uh, plugged in. Just uh, hit the cable uh, between the motherboard and the heatsink and stuff. So uh, now we're going to connect the power to uh, the DVD. This can also go only one way, so uh, can't go wrong with this. And the hard drive power. Uh, this is actually a really good connector. It has like uh, SATA power and the Molex connector. The Molex is for uh, this. I'm gonna connect that from the other side. But it's uh, power for the hard drive. Just uh, be careful not to twist the cables too much. Just put them on the side. And this can go on the other side. We will connect it up on the other side. These Molex cables have sometimes problems that the pins twist a little bit. Yeah, this one doesn't go in there. See, the pins are just moving around. So as you can see, these uh, pins twist in there, so it's very hard to actually connect these ones, but uh, with a little bit of practice, you uh, <laughs> should be able to do it. So, uh, Well, if the fan doesn't work, then uh, you, you'll be able to see that it's not properly connected, but I think it's done, so... Uh, so I have to be careful that the wires doesn't go in the fan from here, so um, I'm going to probably attach them to here with some kind of cable tie, and hopefully that should be it. Right, the uh, only thing to do is connect the SATA cables up, which we're going to just uh, do right now. One for the hard drive, one for the DVD drive. This is the okay. easiest one. These can only go uh, one way, and it absolutely doesn't matter in which uh, place you connect them to. I will just see what I'm doing in there. There's one. Just click in like that. And this you might want to hide. And the hard drive is here. Right, 
I actually hide it behind there so it stays out of the fan and the other one comes for the DVD I actually put it behind there I think it actually has the room to actually go all the way up on the top yes there we go and that's all connected up so I'm gonna just uh, put the covers back on the cover is gonna take care of that so well now it's the front case you can have two fans in here if you have more powerful gear in there but uh, this one has a front fan and that should be more than enough for the cooling the front panel always has the hand screws so you can easily undo this Now we can wire this up and uh, pull it up. Right, as you can see I have uh, connected it up and the keyboard is the missing part. So this is just a basic keyboard. It didn't really even uh, come in a proper box. Let's put them in the back. And we can just follow them up. As you can see the monitor is turned on. So uh, let's push the button and see what happens. There we go. Yeah, it doesn't have an operating system, so that needs to be installed. As you can see, computer works and it looks cool. So uh, I ran into small problems with this. As you can see, I had this on the screen, and uh, I will put the DVD in, and that's the Windows uh, installation. And this here, as you can see, it's a CD DVD. And if I try to boot from here, you can see it's doing something in here, and this is the message I got. And I couldn't figure this out why it's doing that and it doesn't seem to have any BIOS either so I hit just alt Control delete and then keep tapping delete button because it doesn't actually say that you can go into the BIOS or anything so uh, I was stuck on this one a little bit but uh, if you just keep tapping the delete then you will see this if we go into advanced BIOS features write this one boot sequence go in there and this 2.2 terabyte, that's not the hard drive, this is some kind of motherboard feature, uh, you don't want this. Uh, just change this to CD, DVD, leave the second boot as uh, hard drive, which is this one, and the third one disabled. F10 to save, OK, and now it should boot from the DVD. I'm going to just make sure that it does. Uh, yeah, there we go, it's booting up. And as you can see normally you don't see any BIOS uh, entry at all, so uh, it just directly starts booting from the first boot device without showing anything at all. And there we go. So if you have the same problem, uh, you know how to fix this.